During my days, and it was a long time ago, our parents used to uh, tell us, go to school, study hard, uh, find a good job, work hard, and you'll probably end up in that place um, until you retire. But nowadays, things have changed. It's go to school, study hard, find a job, spend a couple of years, get experience, and then set up your own business. So things have changed. Tonight's episode is about business and uh, entrepreneurship. As the saying goes, give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day. Teach a man how to fish and you'll feed him for a lifetime. Let me add to that. Teach the guy how to set up a business and he'll never have to fish again. I'm Anangari and you're watching A Slice of Life. Seven McDonald's branches in Baguio, Cafe Venice, Sunshine uh, Supermarket, and you have French Line. Common denominator, one man, one clan. T this evening, we have for you a very special guest, one of the most successful businessmen in Baguio, the quintessential entrepreneur, Mr. Mike Del Rosario. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mike. Thank you for being here. Uh, in spite of your busy schedule, thank you so much uh, for finding the time. I know that you were sick prior to this, yes. and uh, I'm glad you can find the time. Mike, you are from Baguio, right? Yes, I was born here, Ari. Oh, great. Okay. And where did you go to school? I went to St. Louis for my elementary and for my high school, then okay. went to UP for my college. UP Baguio? UP Baguio for two years, then okay. I went to Dilliman for the last three years. Oh, we're from the same school, UP. Oh, but really? Baguio lang ako. Oh, okay. Hanggang just, Baguio lang. It's the same UP. <laughs> and your course was? Uh, business Administration and Accountancy. Business, okay. Your choice of a course, was this because something that was influenced uh, by your dad or by choice? I think it was by choice and I found the need for it. Oh, okay. When you say you found the need for it, this means? I thought that it would be very useful for the family business. Oh, uh, okay. Because early on, uh, I remember I have fond memories actually of seeing your dad yeah. in Sunshine Supermarket. Because eh? when I grew up way back in the 60s, that's how old I am actually, way back in the 60s, I used to go to Sunshine Supermarket, your dad would be right in front uh, of the place. So during the time, I presume you were part of it, is this why you decided, I think I have to take up uh, business administration? I think that was the reason. I remember your mom very well. <laughs> okay. I used to be the cashier for her and really? she'd always give me a nice smile. And uh, I would have, uh, I have fond memories of her shopping at Sunshine. I will let Mama know about that. that would be you good. have uh, four kids, correct, Mike? Yes, I have. Okay, four. Uh, all of them. Did they take up business also? Except for James and uh, James and Jennifer. James and Gen Jennifer. Yeah, yeah. So the other two uh, took up business. Yes. Was this by choice also, or did they see the need also? You know, since we're in the family business, and we have, you know, we have an empire essentially, have an empire already. Not really. So <laughs> I think it is. You know. <laughs> And uh, did they see the need also the same thing, uh, I, like you did? I never asked them. I let them choose their own uh, courses. Oh, okay. So it was by choice, balin sa kanila. Yes. So I guess uh, we'll find out. We'll be interviewing Jessica later on, the youngest daughter. And let's find out, by choice nga ba, uh, what do you call this, yung, uh, yung, sh yung choice niya. Uh, you're a very uh, busy person. What is your Not typical really. uh, day like, man? Well, the morning I try to go biking and exercising the morning okay. before I start my work. But of course, my cell phone is on, so I'm still, I'm still texting and uh, okay. communicating. So it's non-stop, even when you start, you start your morning at like 6.30, 7.30 in the morning? Around that time. That's pretty early, huh? And you go to, you go to bed early in the morning? I go to bed at around 11, About 11 to 12, yeah. So pretty good. So you normally start biking 6.30, 7.30, do you go afterwards, do you go visit the establishments as you uh, go through the day? Sometimes I like to pass by the store before going back to shower, ah, okay. just to say that uh, I did my job early in the morning. Great way to start <laughs> the day. And, but during the time, you always have your cell phone. Yes, I also have. The cell phone of Mike, when uh, Annette and I dropped by to visit Mike, you know, his cell phone was ringing like, left and right, non-stop. That's probably how the phone is during the pag during the storm. Non-stop ringing. That's how the busy, you to call this, uh, Mike was during uh, our visit. One thing that strikes me, Mike, you know, about you and the rest of your family, 
you're you're very unassuming. You're very simple, and uh, you wouldn't notice. You would like notice that wow, like this is the family that owns such a big thing. Was this something that was passed down from your father, and something that you pass on to your kids? Because I see the same thing with your children. They're very simple. They're very humble, and I really admire that trait. I think my parents uh, taught us how to be humble. Okay. And I think the Bible says also that whoever exalts himself will yes. be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. That's great. I like that saying. But then Mike also writes, and uh, he, he's a columnist for, for Sunstar. And going over your articles, I know you have, you have a lot of quotations coming from the Bible. Yeah. Was religion something you found early on, or something later in life? Because a lot of people, they only seem to discover God their later part of life and they find realize their mortality that's the only time they seem to realize uh, that there is a God in your case was it something early on in your life I was introduced to the Catholic faith early in life my mom introduced me to that and I went to um, catechism classes under sister Gustave at the bishop's house and uh, I had my Chinese Catholic youth organization with yes. father Chang I remember yes. father Chang yeah. This is, uh, what is that church near Kisa? Lourdes Church. Lourdes yeah. Church, yes, yeah, Lourdes yes. Church, yes. Okay, so we're also there. Yes. Is Sunday normally considered family time for Mike? Well, I try to uh, the past few years. Okay, so it's a regular thing, like non-stop, uh, everybody hears Mass uh, Yes, we together. try to go to Mass together. Yeah. Okay, and trying to balance uh, family time. How do you find time to separate uh, work and then you have your family and do you have a, a me time where you just find time to sit down and contemplate just just for you well I think I find my me time uh, throughout during the day and uh, well I do not have any set time for that yes. I think I find that time so there is yeah. so even if you're busy in the midst of your busy schedule you can just like separate yourself from the world and say like okay I can find peace Mm, I, I wish I could do that, but I think I find peace throughout the day. Great, yeah. great. And going back, family business, how do you divide your time? Like, okay, do I schedule this time for my family? I have this certain uh, time for business, or do they cross over uh, one another? Now that my kids are involved in the business, I think they're yes. mixed up already. So okay. I can meet my children about work throughout the day, and I can uh, mix my family life with my business life. Oh, that's good. So do you work like hand in hand? Like, are you like in the same office, the same area, and it's like a father looking over the children, or do you just delegate them to a certain area and, okay, you're on your own? I would like to say that uh, I'm trying my best to delegate it to them, yes. although we share a common office, that uh, next door office yes. at least, so we can discuss and uh, things that are, have, have to be discussed. Okay. Yeah. Are the four children involved uh, in the business? James and uh, David are in the McDonald's business. Jennifer uh, sometimes goes to McDonald's, but, yes. but is setting up her own advertising thing. And Jessica, since graduation, is mm -hmm. handling the bakery, bake shop. Oh, okay. And how early on did your children get involved with the business? Is it something right out of college that uh, they got involved in the family business? or? Did they join another company and then enter your family business afterwards? James started with another company and then uh, came back uh, from okay. Manila. The others joined uh, directly. right? Directly. After with so your eldest daughter came in directly. Yes. Is yes. she still uh, with uh, the family business right now? Uh, on a part-time basis, yes. Only on a part-time yes. basis. Is, any, is everybody else, uh, everybody based in Baguio? Or they're is all based in Baguio. They're all here. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good thing, working hand in hand uh, with, the whole, with the whole family. When it's time to end the day, okay, like tapos the day natin and then you're all home for dinner, family dinner, is it like, okay, wala na tayo papag-usapan na negosyo, ha? it's uh, family time lang. Ganun ba yun? Or does it cross over also into like the dinner time and the family time? I think my wife wants me to do that, but it just comes out naturally that okay. things uh, get discussed during the day. Oh, okay. So it's Alice who's complaining. Sige, Alice, pag-usapan namin ni Mike trying to uh, put this thing separate because I have the same concern. My wife, because we're in the house, ba? Let's stop, let's stop talking about uh, business. But I must 
I mean, that's a difficult uh, thing to do. Especially Some people can do it, but uh, I don't seem to be able to do so. Practice lang siguro. Maybe. I think eventually, <laughs> you know, eventually we'll get to practice and get this thing together. Family time during dinner, because I remember I saw a campaign ad, a uh, national campaign ad, where they espouse families to have dinner at least once a week. That was surprising, huh? Once a week, every Friday. So when my kids saw that, they go, what? Once a week long, on Fridays, why is it like that? And I go, well, some people don't have dinner together regularly. So in our family, we find time to do that. Is it the same? Do you make sure in our family time, dinner, we're all together? Uh, I think someday we'll be able to do that. Someday. <laughs> Apparently, you're that busy and the rest of the kids. Yeah, I think some, they have their own schedules too. I guess then when your kids are growing up, it's hard to pull them all together. Okay, so that was a sneak peek into the personal life of uh, Mr. Mike Del Rosario. Stick around. The next we'll be talking about the businesses. We'll be back in a few minutes. Okay. So we're back with Mr. Uh, Mike uh, Del Rosario. For this segment, we'll be discussing about uh, the businesses. So Mike, um, you have several businesses. Some were, uh, you have a turnkey operation, like we call the franchise business. Some things are that you started uh, from from scratch. Now, what is the advantage of setting up a business from scratch and the advantage of doing it the uh, franchise way where everything's just given it's a turnkey operation? Well, if it's not franchise, if you start from scratch, I think you get to do everything from the very beginning. Okay. Of course, there are more headaches, but I find it uh, quite challenging. So given the choice, you'd rather start from scratch than franchise? Well, if it's it uh, an or thing, uh, I think I would do from scratch. From scratch. If it were or, an or thing. Situation, because, it's one more, or the other. because it's more challenging. Yeah, I think so. So would you give the same advice to the people who are out there trying to decide, right? do I franchise something, whether it's only a small cart business or starting a cart business on their own, would it be better for them to franchise or try to develop something from scratch? Maybe it would be good to start something from scratch and then maybe if the opportunity is there, mm -hmm. to join a bigger franchise thing. And oh, okay. So you can, can have the best of both worlds. Oh, or the worst way. of both worlds. <laughs> yeah, right about it. Either way, it's something that, uh, that you can learn from. Yes, you can learn from the franchising thing yes. and apply it to the, your business that you're starting on your own. Oh, okay. When did you get into the franchising? Was McDonald's the very first one that uh, was franchised? Yes, it was. And yes. how long? I believe the first one was in Session Road? And yes, it was in Session Road. And how did you decide to, uh, okay, let's franchise this establishment and let's do a franchise? How did it come about? We heard that SM bought uh, Luneta Hill, and so we knew that uh, in time our grocery business would be affected by it. So we thought okay. of looking for a business that might protect us from uh, mm. the, in the coming of SM. So oh, okay. we opened our eyes to potential franchising businesses. Ah, so that's how it came about. So yes, during the time, palang. Yes. So you were saying that, that SM might uh, affect your. Uh, your, yes. grow, your supermarket. Yes, I've indeed. been to your su supermarket. I've been in and out, and it's always packed. So in reality, like present day, does uh, SM really have an impact on your supermarket? It has, and uh, we're, we're slowly recovering from it. Oh, okay. So things are getting better than from when it first uh, started? Yes, when SM opened, uh, we saw our sales drop tremendously. Okay. So it's been like five? How long has SM nine been? Years, nine years. Oh, nine years. Yes. Okay, nine years. So during the nine years, it's like you got back most of your... I think so. We have a number of loyal customers and yes. we'd like to thank our loyal Sunshine customers. Super. I guess there are some things that you can offer, you know, than uh, as compared to what a bigger supermarket. Yours is like something you can come home to it. It's a friendly yes. family type yes. supermarket. What do you have to offer that the bigger ones uh, cannot offer? I would like to say that we offer our their basic needs and uh, okay. when they come to Sunshine, they get, usually get lower prices and they don't have to spend more than what they need because when you go to a big shop, you end up sh spending so much for things that you don't really need. That's a good point. And I guess that's why my mom always went to your supermarket. Yes. Right? I know there are other choices during those days, you know, but mom was always uh, yes. in your supermarket. Okay, when it comes to... Uh, employing uh, your staff how much are you involved when it comes to the to the HR 
do you actually do the interviews or is this now delegated to your HR department? My daughter would like to say that I am one HR department by myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a few people with me. I have a few people, very good people, uh, very good people with me. Okay. And uh, I used to interview all staff up to last year when my two sons started uh, interviewing uh, some of them. Okay. While I still, though I still interview the the manager trainees and uh, okay. other positions. So up to a certain level, yeah. up to a certain level you do the interviews yes. and then for example of below management trainees yes, this yes. is something that you can uh, I've started delegate, to delegate them last year yeah. okay and when it comes to hiring your staff what are the particular characteristics that you're looking for for an ideal staff i like to look for people with uh, value okay. values uh, so i'm looking for character more than competence Okay, that seems to be the trend uh, nowadays, hiring people based on their character and personality as compared to the skills, because I believe the same thing, that uh, the skills you can teach, you know, character, yeah. uh, that's Takes a different a story. So definitely for you, priorities, the character and the values. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now when it comes to, let's say, being a boss, for those out there who are looking to be entrepreneurs and putting up their own businesses, what do you think should be the character of a good employer, of a good boss? Well, it's hard to say that uh, without thinking of myself. <laughs> but <laughs> so that's, that's, a good, that's a good example. <laughs> uh, that's a good example. No, I'm just kidding. No? I think a good boss would be somebody who uh, who's concerned about performance as well as as a heart for everybody. I think that's the most important. I came across an article where it said the most important thing, like you said, is having a heart. Uh, for your staff, where you truly uh, care uh, about your staff. So, how difficult is it to manage? You probably have literally hundreds of uh, staff, and I'm sure you delegate part of it. Up to which part do you delegate, and which part do you make sure, ah, ako gagawa ng mga to? Anything that has to do with human relations usually ends up with me. Anything that has to do with customer comments usually okay. ends up with me. When you say human relations, this is? Uh, when there are interpersonal relationship problems, yes. usually comes to my desk. So you actually find the time to sit there. For example, there are squabbles, let's say, yes. between yes. your staff. You personally have the time to sit down with them and then try to fix things up. That's okay. I, I try my best to find time for that. Wow. Considering you have hundreds of staff, huh? that's, that's incredible. Yeah, okay. I try to find time unless the manager doesn't report to me about it and handles yes. it himself. Then they take care of they it already. Of it, yeah. Okay. Is there a certain por uh, part where you say, okay, pag ito yung problema natin, uh -huh. like you tell the managers, bahala na kayo, ha? and then afterwards, if not, tsaka niyo hand. Is there a certain level that you cut off where the managers, uh, where you delegate, ito, this is what you do. Anything above that is passed on to me already. I, Make do, not, I do not have a clear cut uh, cut off for that. None. Uh, we have an open door policy where anybody can come straight to me. Okay. All of them ha can have access to my cell phone. So oh, that's great. Number. That's great. So, wala yung parang chain of command. Dapat dumaan mo na sa supervisor and then sa manager before they get to Mr. Mike Tadosario. I try to avoid that and I tell them uh, they can have access to me anytime. That's great. What is the advantage of that kind of system? Because there are some like big corporations where they still strictly follow the chain of command. Given your structure, essentially this is the flat uh, way of doing it. What is the advantage of that kind of uh, approach? Well, I think there are advantages and disadvantages. Okay. The advantage is that they know they can reach me at any time for anything. Okay. It makes the relationship a bit closer. And the disadvantage of such uh, a structure? It takes a lot of my time. Okay. And given that, considering they have access to you any time. So do you get like odd calls at the weird uh, time of the day? It's like, sandali lang, medyo late na. I'm still getting calls regarding so on and so forth. Does that happen because of this kind of uh, policy? I, I try to tell them if it's urgent and important, you can call me 24-7. If it's not urgent and important, yes. just try to call me or text me before 10. So yeah. does it mean your phone, Mike? So it's always on even throughout the night? It is. Wow, that's kind of busy. Uh, doesn't that okay? I'll get this right this time. I got the name wrong. Uh, Alice, sorry, it's not Angie. Okay, doesn't it? <laughs> sorry about that. Doesn't it bother like Alice that the phone rings at certain time? It's like, why well, you know, turn the thing off, Muna. It's like it's time to rest. Wala bang I think she got used to it. 
anasana na rin siya. Okay. And how involved is uh, Alice in uh, the operations also? Uh, she takes care of uh, signing checks and reviewing the disbursements. Okay. So we uh, she comes in there already. How's that? She comes in in that portion when it comes yes, to yes. check signing yes. also. Are the children now part of uh, that one where they were able not to sign on your behalf or when it comes to problems of HR, you can now pass it on like, Jess, diba? uh, we have concerns regarding sa bakery, diba? uh, try to handle it. Has it come to that point already? I think they're starting to move into that already, especially at McDonald's and at the bakery. Yes. yes. Among the businesses, what do you think is the most challenging uh, from the ones that you're handling? I think each has its own concerns, so I never really weighed the uh, one against the other. So for you, like, it's all the same lang? Yeah, just work. It's just work. Trabajo lang. Okay. You've achieved so much in a span of time. How do you see yourself five years from now? What else would you want to do? Is there a certain business that you would still want to set up? I have no plans at the moment. Nothing for now? Nothing. So we're not looking at, okay, Mr. De Rosar is putting up a new franchise again or expanding the hotel or the supermarket. Is it like, okay, I think I've done my share and let's pass this on to the next generation of time to rest. Are you at that point already? But I think when opportunities come, I might, uh, so it might involve just the children, just involve the children. Okay. Regarding the competition, there's a lot of other fast foods that you have uh, in the city. Do you perceive them like as a threat or is it like friendly competition how do you view the other uh, fast foods that you have in the city i always look at them as uh, friendly competitors as friendly competitors yeah. okay sm is there well, and uh what do you call this and you have mcdonald's which is also there can i presume right when i say okay being the biggest mall correct yeah the biggest mall enough and uh, you have mcdonald's there is that like the strongest branch and uh given the strongest branch you have most of your um, you have most of your employees there. Does it give you the most headache also because you have the most employees in one area? Actually, it's one of the weaker ones, the one in the mall. I'm surprised. Yeah. Okay, is it because I guess overhead? Uh, Not really. I think it? there are just too many restaurants there. Ah, in SM. Oh, okay. So let's say you were mayor of the city. Okay, you're mayor of the city. You're running this year. Mike De Rosario wins for a mayor. And you would try to change something about the business climate of Baguio. What would you do? What would you implement? Well, I would, I would like to make it easy for a businessman. I would like to make uh, taxes reasonable for the business okay. people. Renewal of taxes, uh, licenses easier. Uh, in other words, I would like it to be a friendly a business friendly city that would be good didn't we implement like a one-stop shop uh, where everything you can register from dti to sec to your taxes and everything didn't we set that up uh, i'm not too sure i have some people helping me out there oh okay I mean, but i hear some people make comments so. about taking the time i think our personal experience you know how long it takes to get these permits or uh, or licenses anyway what do you call this that was a short look into the businesses of Mr. Mike Del Rosario. We'll be back in a few minutes, so stay tuned. We're back. Uh, I've been getting the names wrong the whole evening, right? Uh, Angie will not be able to forgive me. I owe you cheesecake. Not only a slice, I'll send you a, a whole cheesecake just to make up for that, Angie. And before anything else, I'd like to uh, greet uh, Din Din Antonio, one of her instructors from Fitness Edge. And the very talented kids, uh, Kylie and Guion, one of the better dancers of Baguio City. And those watching us on uh, YouTube, I'd like to say hi to Miss Marianne Laverty from Glendale, California. Marianne is an international flight attendant from U.S. Airways. Hey, Marianne. Another one to uh, Miss Winnie Garcia Litao from Columbus, Ohio. I heard it's freezing cold right now, about negative uh, three. So keep yourself warm. And to the staff of Forest House, I hope you're watching, but working at the same time. And also, and also from uh, Burnham Hotel. Before we proceed with the cooking portion, I'd like to show some uh, pictures, please. 
Okay. Uh, Mike, take a look at the picture, Jessica. This is a picture. These are pictures of our staff. Parol naman, man, Rudy. These are uh, pictures of our staff in one of your branches, uh, on one of your branches in Makdo. The story of this is uh, during the first Simbang Gabi, uh, we hear Mass in the traditional uh, Latin Mass. So I went there, I was hearing Mass, and then next thing I knew, the whole staff of Forest House followed me to hear Mass in the Simbang Gabi. So they surprised me. So afterwards, we all decided to have breakfast, and uh, take note, near the cathedral, there's a fast food there, but we went all the way to your branch, near your place, to have breakfast. So that is a picture of me with the complete staff of Forest House. By the way, to all of those who, uh, to all the staff in, um, we call this, McDonald's, thank you for bearing with us. We know we were a huge crowd, and it's kind of hard to sit uh, 30 packs at the same time, but thank you very much. Okay, I'd like to uh, bring you over to our cooking portion for this evening, so I'd like to pass it over to Annette and to Chef Sheila. It's all yours. Another great Tuesday evening to everyone. And um, again, this is Annette, and with me, I'm Sheila, our sexy chef at Forest Ooh. House. Okay, um, tonight we will be showing a very short, easy cooking dish. Na actually, one of the favorite then namin, kasi for me, um, I'm a mom. I would rather cook yung quick meals eh. Pero this one is best of forest house also. Okay. So Sheila, can we just uh, show the ingredients? Ang meron po natin ngayon is salpicado po. Ito po yung mga ingredients, beef tenderloin. This is Australian po. Tap so this is really tender, yes, no? Yes, Australian. Okay. We have here cooking oil or canola oil, chili powder, aromat, garlic, seasoning, and pepper. Since this is very easy, even your kids at home can cook it. Lalo na yung mom, na working mom, nagmamadali lagi. So yun, we're putting in the oil. Tapos ito po, itagay na po natin lahat ito yung ingredients. Ito po, bawang, marination po nitong beef. Seasoning. So we're marinating the beef. Okay. Seasoning garlic. That is? Ground pepper po. Ground pepper. Pinch of aromat. Yes. Saka chili powder po. Okay. So a little bit spicy na. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then? And tapos po nun, mix so lang po siya. May mix, mix lang mix. po. Make sure that the pan is hot. Opo, ma'am. Pero not so hot, no? Medium Opo, lang? Opo. Okay, para hindi siya masunog. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Ilalagay na po natin yung... Put it in. Salticad. Wow, kalalagay po lang. Naamoy ko na Sheila. Grabe. That's so good. Mm. Sarap na amoy. Oh, by the way, aside from fresh garlic, you can also use crunchy garlic, which you can buy at um, Sunshine Department Store or uh, um, Grocery Store, rather, which is um, handled by Jessica uh, the Rosario. It's um, Bakeline, so you can purchase this there if you don't want to fresh garlic. Crunchy garlic is also good for this dish. So how long will, are we going to cook this, Sheila? Um, about three to five minutes ko. See, ang bilis lang talaga, di ba? So kung medyo gutom ka na, and you have fried rice at home, easy cooking. Beef pa, di ba? So, Actually, I'm requesting Sir Mike is Korean beef ribs, pero we have this, ano, kasi mas mabilis kong lutuin. Pero don't worry, Sir Mike, we can cook another Korean uh, beef, uh, dish sa'yo when you go we visit, visit Forest House, okay? And then after that, Sheila... Yung garlic rice po, ma'am. Ah, pinrecook na namin yung garlic rice earlier para mas mabilis, okay? So Sheila will start plating it. Also hot, no? Ininat mo na rin siya. Opo, ma'am. Okay. Here. So we'll just stop it? Opo, ma'am. Parang that's it. Stop it. Stop it. See, that's very, very easy. Eh, kahit ako pala, sandaling-sandali lang, no? Maluluto ko na siya. Lalo ako, hindi ako masyadong into cooking. Okay. Si Sir Mike will also love this dish. So hindi man natin naluto yung Korean beef ribs na request ni Sir Mike. Eh. This definitely will 
entice the, ano, for his appetite. Okay. Ano lang yun? Pero ang bango-bango, grabe siya nila. Nakakaganang kumain yan. Pag naman ganyan na lagi ang ulam ko, hindi na yata ako magdadaya siya. Okay, Ayan po, okay na po. Okay, gusto so, magdami. Ah, hindi ko ito pwedeng tikman. Bahala na sila, Sir Maggie, tsaka Sir Ari magtikim niyan. Pero amoy pa lang talagang, mm, you can be sure it's really good. Smell good. Mm, yummy talaga. Again, top it with crunchy garlic. Okay, okay, cut. Okay, aside from this dish, we are also preparing a very delicious, delectable um, dessert from Forest House, which we call goreng pisang. Okay. So we'll set this aside first. Okay. Um, when you uh, you when you get this item from Bakeline, you look for Miss Jessica Del Rosario. French line. A uh, French line, rather. Um, see, Jessica handles French line, uh, which is located at Sunshine. Okay. Then, po. natin yung goreng. Sir Ari, nakakahawa ka strike to ako. Sorry. Anyway, French line. Okay. It must be the air here. Yeah. And you look for Miss Jessica, the very lovely Jessica. Jessica will Slice kill me also. Slice French line. Okay. Slice banana. This is now the goreng pisang. Pisa ang... Where, where do we uh, get the name goreng pisang? Um, it came from Indonesian or Malaysian dish. Ah, oh, okay. Fried or, Pero it is, is fried banana po. Fried banana. But Apo. this is our version of goreng pisang. Okay. Yeah. Fried banana. Ayan. So we will start frying it. Yes, ma'am. Butter A little po. amount of butter. Mali, ang mga ingredients pala nito is uh, saging na lakatan po. So we're using lakatan. Yes, ma'am. Saging na lakatan. Can we also use other type of banana? Ay, ma mas ma ano po ito, mas masarap po yung mas masarap yung lakatan. lakatan. Kasi yeah. po kakaiba, may kakaiba. Of course, this is very healthy why? Kasi it keeps you going, 'di ba? Tapos it has amino acid. Oh, po, ma And uh -huh. it's rich in potassium. Oh, very rich in potassium, right? To keep you going. So, sabi nila, oh, hindi na uso yung an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Kasi it's a banana day keeps the doctor away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. There you go. What, what is the food there? Mom Tandway Rampo. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> but this is Sheila nagunat sa apoy niya. See? Pero it's really good, Tabas no? Tapos ito po, panut siya, ma'am. Medyo nainitan ako. Oh, okay, don't. Mali, ang mixture po nitong panut siya is coconut oil. Yeah. Coconut oil, tapos ito po, sinakob, tapos little of water. So we can buy this naman sa market lang, no? Opo, oh, ma'am. Okay, sinakob. See? This is not just fried banana. It has a little more ingredients to entice the flavor. Ang bango rin, grabe. Yes ma'am, okay na po. If we plate, okay. if we plating na po natin. Okay, we'll just move this aside. Ayan. Um, Sheila is now putting the layers of wonton wrapper. Fried also. Okay. Do not worry, yung frying naman, eh, ano yan? Uh, hindi naman masyadong nakakatabayan kasi you're uh, making it balance with the bananas. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, another nutritional um, value that we can share, yung garlic that we use, ano siya, nakakalesan ng cholesterol. And uh, yung allicin or the part of it, it's um, antioxidant also. Tower of one ton banana, another one ton, and another one ton. Oh, one ton pa. Okay. Layer po siya. It depends on them. If they might oh, want to have uh, a little higher dessert oh, for that. And of course, and uh, lastly, the Sheila will po. top it with ice cream. vanilla ice cream. Mmm, good. Oh. Sarap. Uh, wala rin ditong diet diet pag ito ang dessert grabe. It should oh, be diba? perfect for Mike. Yes. There was something cold. Something cold. <laughs> yeah. And cashew nuts, another healthy ingredient. Nuts. Okay. And drizzle it with chocolate, chocolate syrup, syrup, which will make it 
more look appetizingly delicious. Grabe. Ah, eto siguro pwede ako makihingi oh, mamaya ako. kila Sir Ari. Titikman ko rin tong gawa mo na ito. Ah, diba? So we have salpicado and our dessert at Forest House. So come to Forest House to have a taste of this. And by the way, I would like to greet my sister uh, there in Virginia, Doctora Josephine Manyala. Keep on yes. watching. And all those uh, televiewers here in Baguio. Um, Mrs. Felic Felicitas, um, Felicitas. Felicidad uh, Tinza. Tinza. I hope you're watching right now, ma'am. Um, visit us at Forest House. Okay. Again, you're still watching Slides of Life with Manong Ari. We'll be back for more. <laughs> this seems to be a night of uh, this seems to be a night of uh, forgetfulness, getting the names wrong and the names of the and the names of the establishment. And uh, okay, let's get the names right this time. What do you call this? So our stuff was care. How do you call this? The garlic that we have was care of uh, French line. And I forgot another thing. Uh, Jessica is giving out three packs of pastries care of uh, French line. And uh, all you have to do. It's just call up the numbers that you see on your screen. So again, we're giving away three packs from French Line. All you have to do is dial the numbers that you see on your screen. So we'll be back in a few minutes. This is the last portion of success in the Last portion of success? Okay. okay. Very good. Okay, we're back and uh, we're here to try uh, the dish that uh, Chef Sheila cooked. Hopefully her eyebrows and eyelashes aren't part uh, of, our, <laughs> of our dish. So uh, <laughs> let's try this out. But joining us uh, here for this evening is the lovely daughter of uh, Mike, is Jessica. Jessica, say good evening, please. Hi, good evening, I'm Jessica. <laughs> and uh, Jessica, by the way, is the one helping out with uh, French line. I think I got the name right yes. uh, this time or this night of, uh, of Alzheimer's. So please, let's try the dish first of uh, Sheila. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is from Forest House. Ooh. And this is called uh, Salpicao. Smells good. Chef, excellent. In spite of the eyebrows, <laughs> we're, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> okay. Mm. How do you so like good. it, Mike? Yeah, very good. Jessica? It's also one of his favorites. Really? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so aside from doing this, we promise to do for your dad the um, mm -hmm. Korean. Oh, yay. Yeah, yeah. Next time. With me. With you also. And I think <laughs> earlier we saw you watching. So we'll be back in one of our shows and Jessica is going to cook something for us. Huh? Oh. Wouldn't you like that? That would be good, huh? <laughs> so wait for one of our episodes and Jessica's going to cook Yeah, first. I have to learn how to cook first. Easy to do that. <laughs> okay. By the way, uh, thank you to Nesty for, for providing um, our drinks. So we have the house blend and we have the blue lemonade. Nesty, uh, thank you very much. So we'd like to go back to our... Uh, short cuento uh, with Mike. But uh, Mike is a, like I said earlier, Mike is a columnist for uh, Sun Star Baguio. And I was going over one of the columns. Allow me to read a um, short quote from one of your columns. And we were talking about success. And Mike was quoting Ralph uh, Waldo Emerson. And the question is, how do you measure success? To laugh often and much? To win the respect of intelligent people and the appreciation of children? to earn the appreciation of critics and endure the betrayal of false, fr uh, of false friends, and to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better. And it goes on. An excellent uh, poem by Mr. Ralph uh, Emerson. In your own words, Mike, how would you define success? I think a person successful when he's able to fulfill his purposes in life, reach his potential, achieve his goals and live out his dreams. That sounds good. So that is, for what about for Jessica? What do you think at her age, Iba, so you're looking forward, mm -hmm. what do you think would make you successful in like 20 years from now, you know that you'll be able to say, that, ah, successful ako because nagawa ko to. What would success be for you, Jessica? Mm. Right now, I can't say something that specific. Okay. But it would be when I wake up and I know I'm very proud of myself. Yes. And 
It's actually what Dad said. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. When I know um, I'm really reaching my potentials, yes. I'm doing my best in wherever I am. Okay. Whether it be here in the bakery, work in the bakery, or somewhere else. As long as I'm doing my best, and right. that's when I'll be successful. Great, great. Jessica, you're fresh out of uh, fresh out of college, mm -hmm. and from there, you went straight to the family business. Yes. But now, from college, but you have the theoretical side. Yeah. And then now you're back in, this is the real world. Yeah. What is the major difference that you've seen? Uh, ah, they were teaching this in school, but in the real world, ganito pala to. <laughs> Name a couple of things that you've noticed. Okay, Dad keeps saying that, just you're in the real world. <laughs> okay, I think that's like saying that, yeah. wake up, daughter. Okay, Dad. <laughs> hmm, first thing is, it's not exactly the same as the books. Okay. Especially in terms of steps. Like you just realize it, oh, I actually need this proposal that we did before in college. Yes. You just sort of realize the importance of the things you do in college. Because in college, you just yes. want to finish it and pass everything. Right, right. And major difference. What about hmm. like in operations of the place, from the, you know, like operations management, I presume you have that course. Yeah. Something that was different from what you learned in the book and to actually be there in the field. Um... Oh, the major difference is probably um, we forget to put into the picture the people that will that will be in the problem. Like um, a lot of times in school, we try to solve the problem, yes. and then we say, okay, we see the problem, we state some solutions, yes. and then this is what we'll do. But then we realize, oh no, we need um, the people. We will put them in the picture, yeah. and how we do it with them. So there are so many things that. Um, that are not equated. Oh, okay. I see that your daughter has your eloquence when it comes to talking. Oh. <laughs> Super, huh? Is that a compliment, Dad? That is a <laughs> definitely a compliment. Definitely a compliment. <laughs> Mike, if you were to give advice to your children and you'd like to see something in five years, what advice would that be that you'd like to see them achieve in five years? I would always tell our staff and the uh, our people, that we have this slogan we started off more than 20 years ago. Okay. And it's uh, something like, for God in all we do, be the best we can be. Excellent. Excellent. So this is something that you'd like your children to follow and to see in the next uh, five years. Yes, and whatever they do, I think uh, we just have to give our very best. Jessica, take note. Okay, how really? about now? Why five years? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Right now, I guess that starts right now, Diba. Right? Because in order to get there, once at a time, we start now. For those who want to put up their own business, Mike, what advice would you give them? Especially during these times, you have the government who's pushing for entrepreneurship. What advice would you give to these budding uh, entrepreneurs? Definitely, the first thing we need is to be able to have, one must have is mm -hmm. to have a goal. Okay. okay. Of course, beyond the goal is your purpose. No? Then it's important that uh, we prepare ourselves for the business and then we see and create opportunities that are uh, present. Okay. Then we, we persevere. We must be willing to pay the price and uh, we have to pray have and to ask pray. for God's grace. Thank you. Uh, definitely, words of wisdom uh, coming from Mr. Uh, Mike Del Rosario. Uh, Jessica, any parting words for those who will be texting in their um, texting in their numbers? Jessica will tell you where you can claim your prices. So if you haven't texted, just keep on texting, and then we're going to text you back. And you can claim your prices from Jessica. Where can they claim their prices? Okay, you can claim your prices at the second floor of Sunshine Supermart, the office there. So second floor office of Sunshine Supermart. Okay, Jessica, thank you very much. And in parting words, Jessica, mm. anything else you want to say? Um, obey your parents. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, actually, I want to thank um, the bakery staff because they're the ones who made this here. Oh, okay. And everyone watching now and customers for helping me go through school <laughs> okay by the way what it called a message from uh, here's a message it goes hi Jess where is my John John 
Or these are long johns? Yes. 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 I love your uh, I love your bagels too from Tita Raquel. By the way, I tried your bagels. I was telling you, Diba. <laughs> yes. The bagels, the best way to I, I tried the bagels, you know, and that's how we did it. I cut the bagels into two. Salmon. Oven toaster. Yeah, Diba. Cream cheese and afterwards smoked salmon and capers. Oh yeah, bonus, the best, Diba. <laughs> that's what I did. Okay, this is for Tita. I have to get long jam alayata. Mike, any parting words? Anything before we say goodbye? I just like to say Thank you to everyone for watching this show. Okay. Thank you very much, Mike. Jessica. Thank you. Okay. Um, before anything else, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Of course, the Sunshine, Venice Grill, Cafe Venice, Hotel Venice, all the branches of McDonald's, and French Lines. And our sponsor is Route 55, Titania, Fitness Edge, Forest House, and for drinks, Nesty. Okay. Now, let me do a parting words. When... Uh, how do you go about this? Let's see. I think I kind of lost my notes right there. Let's go back. Okay. This is a night of forgetfulness. Uh, <laughs> a night of forgetfulness, really. Now, normally when we see children, we ask children, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you hear answers like uh, the typical, gusto ko maging uh, doctor, or uh, I want to be a lawyer. Or you have those who dream big and they say, I want to be Superman. And you go, bakit? I want to fly around and help people. Wow, cool. Or you have those, what do you want to be? I want to be a fire truck. A fire truck. Bakit? Diba? Kasi mabilis. They're nice. They're flashy. And magpubo ka ng tubig. Malakas. Diba? You have those. Or what do you want to be? I want to be a ballerina. Diba? I want to show people my skills. Unfortunately, somewhere between our childhood and adulthood, we seem to lose the passion and the drive to do what we want to do. But I say, but don't give up on the passion. In order to be happy with what you do, you must have the passion and the drive. So find the thing that you're passionate for and that will make you successful. It doesn't matter how old you are. Let me use my wife an example, Raquel. Raquel has always wanted to teach. So she got into teaching aerobics, but it wasn't enough for her. She dreamt of one day teaching in the university, but she was in her 40s already. She decided, I'm going back to school. But going back to school in your 40s, diba? So she did. She enrolled in master's. She was in her 40s. That made her the oldest student in the class, probably older than, uh, than the teacher. But nevertheless, she finished, and she graduated summa cum laude. And now she's teaching at the university. So she got to pursue her dream in spite of her age. Her next dream, she wanted to become an author. And lo and behold, a few days ago, she finally signed a contract with Phoenix Publishing. And she's now officially an author. And her book will be coming out soon. So to my darling, Raquel, congratulations. And to rest, keep on dreaming. I'd like to end this segment uh, with a story. There was a man walking through the field, and from a distance, he could see a construction. And he approached the construction area. And of course, Oshoso, he asked the person, Ano ginagawa mo? And the person goes, Mason ako. And uh, ano ginagawa ng mason? Inuukit ko tong batong marmol sa hugis ng isang kirubin. Pas ilalagay ko to sa tuktok para maging dekorasyon. He goes, trabaho lang. So the man moved along, and he asked the next guy, he goes, ano ginagawa mo? And he goes, helper lang ako. So maski ang utos nila, gagawin ko. Kailangan ko ng pere, kaya ako ginagawa to. So the man moved on. He went to the third person, and he goes, excuse me, what are you doing? <coughs> and the man goes, sir, I am helping to create the biggest and the largest and the most spectacular cathedral ever. I am creating a house worthy to worship God. And I'm doing all I can in order to come to this project. So someday, I hope people from near far will come to this church cathedral that we are building. And I go, so someday, sir, I hope you too will come over and see the work that we have done to create a place worthy to worship God. So you have one job. You have three people working, but only one person enjoying. 
and the only person who was enjoying it was the person with purpose and the person with passion. And in order to be successful, like I said, you must find your, pri you must find your purpose, you must find your passion. Look for it and go for it. I'm Manongari, and you've been watching A Slice of Life. Thank you, and good evening.